Hello everyone, that manga kid here to give my full series review of Marionette Generation. This is by Haruhiko Mikimoto, and it is a very old Viz release um, that began. Uh, it's five volumes long, but it was serializing in An America Extra, which was a manga magazine that Viz was putting out uh, back in the. I think it started in 1998 or 1999 and into the early 2000s. So I came into these four volumes of it from a friend of mine um, who gave them to me for free. I had never heard of the series before and unfortunately I didn't have volume one so I couldn't read it. And then I went to my local comic book store and they had a bunch of An America Extra and I recognized obviously that this has Marionette Generation and it says new series. Uh, so I bought as many of the An America Extra issues I could that encompassed volume one of Marionette Generation so that I could at least start the series and then finish it off. So technically I'm missing a few chapters worth of the first volume because uh, I didn't have all of the An America Extra issues that encompassed volume one, but this is such an episodic series that it really doesn't matter. I got the very beginning few chapters and then I'm missing a couple other chapters of volume one and then I had the rest of the series. So I got the gist of what happened in this series. This is a very 90s series. Um, a lot of the humor is very dated and honestly inappropriate. Um, but what I really, what drew me to this and want, made me want to buy volume one and read it is the artwork. I think that these covers are stunning, uh, especially this one. I love the use of color. I just love the artwork in general. Uh, I think the paneling is very interesting. The character designs, as well as the backgrounds, there's always something going on. And I just think that it's a really visually interesting series as well as these releases like it's just got this on the inside cover um obviously it's reading in the english direction because these are quite old um and then you can see even on there it's got the an america extra logo rather than viz's logo uh, which i think is interesting um so in terms of my collection and, and the eclectic kind of mix of things i collect this is something that i'm very happy to have in my series in my collection um even though the story itself is ridiculous and convoluted. So basically we follow, um, I believe his name is Izumi, um, and he is, let me just double check. Yes, Izumi is this gentleman here who is in his, I think, mid-20s. He's a manga creator, and... Uh, I don't know if he's necessarily very good at his job, it doesn't really talk much about it. All we know is that he's constantly, he has deadlines and stuff that he's um, stressed about. But he, his parent, one of his parents is marrying the other parent of this girl here who is in middle school. I think she's 14. And so we start off with her going to Izumi's apartment and he is sleeping with this doll. Um, and it's very weird. He doesn't know where this doll came from. And then all of a sudden the doll starts talking and walking around and they're both like, what is happening? What's going on? Um, she, they name her lunch. Uh, so lunch is this little walking, talking doll thing that they don't know where she came from, why she's there. So it's got a bit of a supernatural element to it because lunch sort of is trying to learn about who she is and why she exists and they just kind of accept her into their lives and uh accept the very weird reality that she exists uh it's the problem with marionette generation actually there's so many problems with it but the main problem with the story of it is that it doesn't go anywhere you don't understand what's happening because the mangaka doesn't understand what's happening. Um, it tries to be supernatural and like sci-fi-esque because there's chapters where lunch is like meeting other dolls um, that have whatever her spirit or essence is, is there are others like her that have 
kind of gone into other beings. Her, she just happened to go into a doll, uh, whereas some of the others have gone into other things. Um, it's very strange and, and weird, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and then the other problem and uncomfortableness with the series is that the middle schooler has a huge crush and is not at all shy about her feelings for her soon-to-be stepbrother, who is an adult man. Um, and so it's just uncomfortable because it's very 90s male humor in that, like, it really does kind of joke around with the fact that like this guy he's not interested in her and he tells her he's like you like you're a kid you're going to be my sister like get away from me um but he still jokes about like how attractive she is um and it's just weird and uncomfortable um so that's not great overall the series is not great. I love the artwork. I am happy to have it in my collection, but it's just not a good series. Uh, if this was released today, I don't know that it would be popular. I don't know that people would be like, yeah, this is great. Like, I just don't think that would be the case. Um, but yeah, but like I said, I do enjoy the art. But it's got a lot of like the perverted humor and stuff that we're used to seeing in some of these older series and i guess we still see that today so maybe it wouldn't be super taboo to release this today and maybe i just have wishful thinking that people have moved past this sort of humor but um it's interesting it's also a little I don't know if it was the intention. There are some scenes that are a little gross just because like, so lunch can inhabit other bodies temporarily. And so there are times when she'll like, she wants to be human. She wants to experience human stuff. So she'll like inhabit this, the, the middle schooler or other women. And lunch is for all intents and purposes, a child. She doesn't really know who she is. She doesn't have any memories. She doesn't uh, understand society and so therefore she has the brain of a of a child learning uh, to socialize and whatever and so some of the inappropriate situations she ends up in when she's in other women's bodies is just kind of creepy um and a little gross so yeah i just it's it's uncomfortable uh the thing about the convoluted story is at least the mangaka is aware of it uh, and in all the author's notes at the back he's like thanks for reading i don't know what i was doing here uh i don't know what this story is supposed to be i'm glad you're enjoying it if you're enjoying it because i i don't know what i'm doing uh with this so at least it's a self-aware piece of like the author knows that the sci-fi elephant element is convoluted and doesn't make any sense um and the story goes nowhere the characters are just ridiculous and it's it's fine there are funny parts and parts that i enjoyed so i don't hate it it's just there are some really big problems with it that you know if this was something that was releasing today i wouldn't be like i need to buy that um in fact i'd probably Ne not even give it a second look but i got these for free and then i bought um some of these issues to to read it so anyway those are my thoughts on marionette generation thank you for watching